Hello, hello, hello. I am Indigo Sage and I am coming at you real quick at the beginning of this video just to let you know in case you don't know that I do have a spiritual blog spot at unapologeticallysage.com. You can also find interesting information at unapologeticallysage.com on Instagram as well as Facebook. So go check me out there at unapologeticallysage.com. Welcome to the Indigo Sage Tarot series about romantic love. When I configured my plans for this YouTube channel, I didn't include love readings. The reason for this decision was to provide uncommon topics for tarot on YouTube. Let's be honest. There are thousands of love readings available in these YouTube streets. So I steered clear of love readings in order to provide the overlooked content. However, Jeremiah 29 11 reminds me that we are subject to God's plans. So while I meditated focus on an empowerment message one day, the only thing spirit brought to me was love readings. From there, your love forecast series was born. The way that Spirit has instructed me to read your love forecast is as if it was a story. With four rows, each row represents a chapter in your love life. As you listen to this reading, you will recognize what chapter resonates with you right now. The good thing about this, this way of reading tarot is that it clearly shows the start and the end. Although you'll know where you are in the story, make no mistake, the entire story is yours. From beginning to end, this is your love forecast from your guardian angels. Now let's sage this out. Your love forecast is partly cloudy. It's time for heart overhead decisions. Now I am going to say right now, just making it clear, you've probably already seen that timestamp. I am anticipating that this reading is going to be at least an hour and the reason why is because as I meditated for this I kept getting and pouring in of information and I will go as far as saying this is one of the heaviest readings that I've done so far so with that being said I'm not going to rush it all right I'm gonna give you all of the information you know, right down to the detail that your guardian angels has told me to tell you as the collective. Okay. With that being said, let's sage this out. So for the first four, AKA the first chapter, I use cardamancy, which is a regular deck. And let me tell you, royalty came out, nothing but royalty. All right. Now, which, which is the court cards? With the court cards, they are the king, queen, the knight, and the page. Those four cards paired with the suits, they represent people in our life, important people surrounding our life. And sometimes it represents us, okay? So please keep that in mind. These are going to be descriptions of people and you need to match them up with whomever is in your life affecting your decisions or you know affecting your life period it could be someone from work a friend family member whomever is around you with an influence okay so the first card out was king of diamonds king of diamonds represents a powerful and successful businessman who enjoys the fruits of his labors if he is low vibrational, he's fearsome, deceitful, quick to anger, and revengeful. Despite his flaws, he is attractive to many. Nevertheless, you should be weary of this person. We have here Queen of Spades. Queen of Spades represents an efficient truth seeker who will not tolerate indecisiveness or stupidity. If she's low vibrational, she will exhibit jealousy and vindictiveness, which causes her isolation. Her nastiness is from feelings of abandonment. Be cautious around this person. They are jealous of you and will soon set a trap for you. 
Now, her abandonment issues most likely are by the way of divorce or widowhood. Next, we have King of Hearts. King of Hearts represents an influential man who is wise, tolerant, and patient with romantic and affectionate tendencies. If he's low vibrational, his emotions may take over, which will result in hasty decisions when it comes to his feelings surrounding love. Here comes the reversed ace of spades, okay? With the initials SP on it, that may mean something to someone, so I thought I'd mention that. Now, the reverse ace of spades represents death. One thing is about to end so that new may enter your life. As a low vibrational person, you harbor deep pain that you need to let go in order to invite new love in your life. This new love will make you forget past pain ever existed. You may be holding on to an old entanglement that has ran its Course. The instructions from your guardian angels are to let go of the volatile arguments, inability to see eye to eye, non-communication, painful words, misunderstandings, assumptions, and pure chaos. Let it go. As a summary, the energy from the people around you are blocking you from manifesting what's good for you and your ultimate happiness, especially when it comes to romantic love in your life. Right here, I'm gonna take a quick little break just to bring you guys a sage fact. The sage fact is partly cloudy and partly sunny are the same. The partly cloudy and partly sunny forecast is based on visibility. When visibility in our otherwise clear skies are between 38 and 63 percent, the forecaster has the luxury of two descriptives, partly sunny or partly cloudy. I am intrigued by this. It reminds me of the age-old question, is the cup half full or half empty? I point that out to emphasize the fact that we all have choices. Good things happen to all of us as well as bad things happen to all of us. When it comes to your love life, the choice is indeed yours. Do you want to be all up in your head and make it cloudy? Or would you rather take it in stride and look on the sunny side? The choice is truly yours to make. Right now, your love forecast is partly cloudy. The only thing clear in this message is you are all up in your head. This forecast is cloudy, but with a chance of sunshine. The choice is yours. Let's sage this further and take a look at your next chapter. But before we do, I want to point out you can take a look at the bottom of each corner of your screen. To the left is Let It Flow by Tony Braxton. This song popped in my head as I was meditating and configuring your first half of your love forecast. It's a beautiful song. I suggest you go ahead and look it up. I'm sure that you would be able to relate to it. Even if you don't want to hear the song, I really encourage you just to look up the lyrics of the song. And again, it's Let It Flow by Tony Braxton. I'm not going to break down the song right now, but... It talks about let it go, let it flow, let it flow, let it go. Letting it go when you need to let it go. And I'm going to be honest, throughout this message, I feel like you're currently in a relationship sometime or, or some type of situationship that you need to let go of. Now, the second half of the meditation on this reading brought forth the song, and I still can't get it out of my head, um, All of Me by John Legend which is also a beautiful song. And I suggest you look at the lyrics. You don't have to go to the song and watch the video, only if you want to. Some of you may prefer it that way. But um, to get this message that your guardian angels are sending you, 
to get it very clearly, um, which is not to take away from listening to their video or watching their video, but you can look at the lyrics of both of these songs. So again, your first half of the message resonates with Let It Flow by Tony Braxton. The second part of your um, reading resonates with All of Me by John Legend. Now, let's go ahead and sage it out. I brought out the Moonology cards, the Moonology deck. I love it. So let's dive right in. So the first card out is it's time to take action. New Moon and Aries. You have self-assertion, determination, and bravery, which makes this an excellent time to set your intentions. You're on the right track to a wonderful new start. This card is a big yes from the universe. Do your best and accept the fact that your plan may take 12 months to come into fruition due to Aries being the first of the Zodiac. A win-win outcome is forecast. Full moon in Libra. You must let go of that which is falling away to make room for a new level of love in your life. Libra is the sign of falling in love and closely relating to someone else. A full moon brings climaxes and conclusions. This card showed up to tell you that a new relationship is in the near future or an existing relationship is coming to an end or approaching a new level of commitment. A win-win is possible when you practice give and take. This may sound like a dreadful chore, but you must let go of that which is falling away. But this card lets you know that Libra energy brings love energy. When you see with love, Love makes negotiations easier. A new romantic cycle begins. New moon in Libra. Now is a perfect time to communicate how or what your heart is feeling to the person you are thinking about. Now, I don't think I didn't know this Libra came twice to, to, in a row, two times back to back. So someone may be a Libra or have Libra energy. Give and take could well be the answer to whatever dilemma you're asking about. New Moon suggests it's time for a restart for you and for someone else. A new relationship could be unfolding right before your very eyes and this time, this relationship is on course to be healthy and well balanced. Duly note you will not grow and move forward by being selfish with your feelings. Feel more, think less. Right now is a time for heart over mind. Get out of your head, okay? Which is a message throughout this entire video. It's gonna be get out of your head, use your heart, use your heart over your mind. So, get out of your head, use your heart over your mind, and bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. You must let go of the past and move forward, but you have to want to do that. You can't wait for others to do it for you. Aquarius is all about progress, which means now is the time to move forward. Change is right around the corner. Whether you get the change you desire depends a great deal on whether you believe you can have it and how much you are relying on others to bring it to you, okay? You must let go of the past and move forward towards your future as soon as possible. And you must, when this is saying bring love into the situation, you must love yourself. Bring self-love into the situation, combined with a give and take, and before you know it, you will have whatever it is that you desire. This is the beginning of your new way of seeing things. 
Once you see things the way they truly are, it will be easier to let go of what is not serving you, despite who might not like it. You must allow your heart to lead this time around. So I just want to say that when I say this is the beginning of your new way of seeing things, I am referring to the people in your life, the people who are around you, the people who you've allowed to influence your decision making, especially when it comes to your happiness about romantic love. You have let people influence you who quite honestly has no business giving you advice on love. For instance, the queen of spades, what kept coming up for that person was feelings of abandonment due to divorce or widowhood. This person is alone. Okay, so take a look at that person, wh whomever that is. Are they in a relationship? I'm sure they're not because it's said that they are alone due to their nastiness, the way that they feel and act. Now, again, there's a possibility this person could be you. However, I don't feel like it is. It's someone around you who is influencing your decisions. Do not let someone who has no authority about love relationships give you advice on how to get one or maintain a love relationship. They can't. Look at that person, are they happy? No, they're not. They can't tell you how to be happy because they are not happy. So this is where you are examining all of that, all right? And you're on the right track. Let's continue. Your third row deck used is daily guidance from your angels first one out is acceptance see yourself and others through the eyes of the angels with unconditional love and acceptance in this way you inspire and lift everyone to their highest potential let go of tendencies to force things to happen then you'll receive your desired outcome this card is here to help you improve your relationship with yourself and others do not judge yourself or anyone else too harshly. Instead of judging, choose to pray for their health and happiness. Choosing to be positive will serve you well by building self-esteem, harmony, and healing relationships. It's important that throughout this positive transformation, you keep this in mind. When one door closes, another one opens. So, let me expand a little more on that wishing them health and happiness it may be tough due to the way that they treated you but you must do it and i'm gonna go ahead and draw from my own experiences in my own life i like to do that um because it keeps me humble and it helps you guys know that i am not just talking you know i've been through this stuff so I was in a relationship and moved 3,000 miles away to be with this person only to find out that they lied about everything and it was awful and they were cheating on me. All right, so then I returned back from where I came from. <laughs> now, do you think I was upset? Yes, I very much was because I had changed my life and had given up where I was living and everything to move out there. Now, um, and then to see, you know, it was just a big slap in the face to know that they were lying. It was all a big lie, a big ruse and they were cheating on me, it was awful. So I came back and guess what? I had to wish them well and health and happiness. And I did. Now I'm gonna admit, like the first week I was numb, okay? I wasn't trying to hear it. I wasn't trying to, you know, be all positive for them and all this and that. After the first week, you know, and I'm just talking about my experience. This timeline is not for anyone else. I'm just telling you about myself because this third part of your story, you will have had to have moved forward and away from toxicity. Okay. Cause whatever relationship you had going on was toxic. So this is trying to help you move from it, which is why I'm inserting myself about when I was in a relationship with a toxic person. Um, so anyway, it's not going to be easy to wish them happiness and health and wish them well and wish them blessings. It's not easy. I know it's not easy, but it must be done. I'm going to tell you why. Karma 
does exist. And some people even say karma is a bitch. I don't feel like karma is a bitch. I actually like karma. Um, so understand karma is nothing that, because I've had someone tell me, you know, I don't believe in karma. It's nothing to believe in. What goes around comes back around. The universe gives you whatever you put out to the universe. That's how it works. That's a part of the law of attraction. If you put out bad to the universe, you're going to get bad back. Whatever you, it's a boomerang. Whatever you throw out, you're going to get it back. Point blank, period. So, it's nothing wrong to, you know, grieve the relationship because it died. It's dead. So, you have to bury it. And it's sad when things die. Of course, give yourself that time. Now, when you come out of it, do not wish harm or badness on anyone. Don't do it. And you need to work on forgiving them. But first, you must forgive yourself for even putting yourself in that relationship and being in it as long as you have. Okay? So, forgiveness of yourself, then forgiveness of the other person, because you also need to understand hurt people hurt people. Okay? They were hurt and had a lot of baggage, I'm sure. And then you guys began this relationship and they projected their hurtness, their abandonment, their issues onto you. And you took it on. All right? So you need to forgive yourself for doing that. You know, some of you may feel like, oh my God, I was so stupid to stick around for so long. Get over that and get out of that. Get out of that energy. All right? So that we can bury that right along with that relationship that wasn't right for you. Get out of it. Get out of that energy. Bury it. Move forward. Forgive yourself. Forgive them. Wish them well. You understand me? And keep it pushing. All right. Let, let us keep it pushing to the next card. What a beautiful card this is. Change in direction. The changes you're experiencing are divinely directed by your newborn willingness to open your heart to love and our guidance. You are protected now and in the future, so follow your path to the happy outcomes you desire. Use the universal law of attraction to manifest the healthy relationship with the true love you deserve. So you've had a change of heart that has altered the direction of your life in a positive way. Your angels are guiding you through your transformation and they remind you to Use the universal law of attraction to manifest your true desires as they relate to relationships. Next up, we have joy. Another awesome card to have in your reading. Joy. Joy is the highest energy of all. It's the magical sense that everything is possible. Joy springs from appreciating the gifts within each moment. Joy allows you to attract and create your present and future moments at their highest possible levels. Get into it, okay? At their highest possible levels. A joyful person will attract another joyful person, okay? So this stage of your story is helping you get over and get uplifted you know get over the past pain and uplift yourself because there's a new love coming in and you got to be joyful and you know let's take care of all of that negativity energy and everything bury it so that you can move forward because if you're sad and upset and mad you will only attract another person who is sad upset and mad okay so let's get into the joyfulness all right forget the past bury the past that leave the past in the past okay your angels want you to remember that your power comes from staying centered in a feeling of joy a joyful outlook brings the freedom that you desire while your empowerment enables you to meet obligations at the same time keep the law of attraction in mind like attracts like a joyful person will attract another joyful person and you don't have to, um, I don't know why exactly this part is in there, but it's, it's letting you know you can still be joyful and still meet all of your obligations and responsibilities. So I don't know who of you out there may be feeling like 
if you're so happy, you won't be able to meet your responsibilities. Or if they're, they're okay, they're showing me that you're going back and forth on what actually is your responsibility or not. Okay, so let me tell you something. Okay, let me tell you something because this is what they're telling me right now. You still feel like there's some kind of obligation or responsibility that you have that's, that ties with this past person who caused you pain and grief. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're not obligated to them. They're probably giving you some kind of a guilt trip. Perhaps you've moved out or you're in the process of moving out and they may be saying, well, what am I going to do? I can't afford this anymore. What am I going to do? That is not your problem. This person is trying to trap you and guilt you into staying with them or giving them money or something. That is not your responsibility. That is not your obligation. If there is a child involved that is yours naturally, your child, yes, you have an obligation to the child who you contributed in making the natural way, okay? But if it wasn't natural, and I know that some of you, you get in relationships and this person has a child and you stay with that person and now, oh, that child is like my child. In reality, and you may not want to hear this, but, but this is what I'm here for, okay? No sugar coating. You, you can see that hashtag all throughout my stuff. No sugar coating here. In reality, that's not your child. And you're not obligated to pay anything for that child. You're really not. The relationship didn't work and you must move on. And I'm going to tell you something. If you keep on now with that child not being your natural child and you keep on uh, being in that child's life, you're actually keeping your ex around and thus creating a block in your life to where you will not be able to meet the actual person who is meant for you. So do not sabotage yourself by playing into the guilt trips or whatever that this person is doing, which they're trying to say, oh, you're obligated to do this. This is your responsibility as well as mine. You said you would always help me take care of Neek Neek or whoever. You know, I just threw a little name out there. I don't know. Robert, Bill, Little Billy, Junior, whoever the heck. I don't know. Little Kiki, Little uh, whoever. Whatever the child's name is. It, it could even be a pet. They just show me a pet. Lord, check this out. You're not obligated to this person or anything that has to do with them any longer unless the child is naturally yours meaning you know the, the pure you know you had the egg or they had the sperm if it's not if the child wasn't your sperm or your egg you don't have to worry about it don't allow them to trick you okay Look what we have here, new partner. Now, I just now got done talking about, I kind of went off on a tangent a little bit about you getting a trap being set up to have a blockage in your life where you can't meet a new person. But here in your love forecast, right here, right now, the third part of your story is saying new partner, okay? But you have to do what I previously talked about in order to pull in this new partner that you so much deserve. New partner, a chance meeting is no mistake. It is divinely orchestrated as a catalyst to set the wheels in motion for the fruition of your prayers. Pay careful attention to new people we send into your life. You will recognize them by your sense of familiarity, comfort, and safety. Do not look for this person. They will come into your life naturally. As above, so below is how soulmates enter our lives by design. Your guardian angels are telling you that someone new has entered your life or they are about to. They are an answer to your prayers. You may feel like you've met this person before. In this case, that feeling indicates this person is a soulmate. Not all soulmates will become your romantic partner, but chances are high for this connection. It is divinely guided and will occur naturally. Do not force it. Again, let me say, do not force it. They want me to like keep saying that 
and it's blinking in my mind like it's blinking do not force it do not force it just like a you know like a neon light is blinking 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 the reason why they're telling me they want me to enforce this message to you do not force it is because you must be the type of person that when you get right out of one relationship you go right into another one do not do that don't do that do not do that they <laughs> The image I see is like an old school teacher with the little pointer and some glasses and she's um, shaking that pointer back and forth in her head saying, no, 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 do not do that. Okay. So do not do that. Don't jump, don't end that relationship. And I know you're going to feel vulnerable and it's okay. You got to push through it. You got to feel it. Okay. This is a part of your healing process. This is the part that's hard, it's ugly, you know, it may be a lot of snotty crying going on, crying with the ugly face and all that kind of stuff, but you have to feel it. When you jump right out of one relationship and go directly into another one without a break, that is so that you can avoid going through the process, the healing process. You can't avoid going through the healing process. It's there. The only thing you, you were doing is delaying it. And to be honest, it's not fair for that person who you would jump right into a relationship with because you're going to project those feelings onto them. Unbeknownst to them. That's what you're going to do. That's not fair to them and it's not fair to yourself. So take time out. Don't force it. Take time out. Grieve that past entanglement, situationship, relationship, could even be a marriage, whatever it was, okay? Um, and if you're, they're, they're saying this, and this may be for just about 5% of you guys, if you guys were or are in like business with your parents or taking care of your parents some kind of way and have such a strong obligation to your parents, which has prevented you from having your own love life, now it's time to set boundaries on that. They're not telling me to tell you to get away from them completely. No, no, no. They're not saying that, but you need to take control back from them for yourself to be in control of your own life, which you would be in control of your love life. Some of you are using an excuse that you just have too many obligations going on right now, too many ties, and it has to do with your parents because that queen of spades and that um, king of hearts could have been a mother and a father. And you may have some kind of strong ties to them, whether you're taking care of them or you're in business with them or you're helping them in some kind of way to where they consume a lot of your time, which makes it to where you don't have time. You feel like you don't have time for a love life, so therefore you don't, but you really want one. You gotta set boundaries with them. Boundaries. Okay, now they're flashing boundaries. <laughs> I love my guardian angels. All right. So let's move on to the summary. This is where you've ascended to the next level of understanding. You are building and strengthening your relationship with the universe. Remember the energy you put out comes right back to you. For the final chapter, I have brought out my ultimate clarifiers deck that I've created myself in order to get clearer picture of what's going on and what's going to happen and how you know the ending what the ending looks like so it says once long distance communication or relationship so once long distance communication or relationship means someone is longing for you there is physical or emotional distance between you two or both. I made physical, I highlighted physical because I feel like in this message it's physical distance between you two. Um, someone is longing to close the gap. For some reason these feelings may be hidden. So off, you know, off screen because I'm not going to show you guys these cards but I continue to clarify and for this one i got infinity entwines the heart unapologetically love unconditionally and i've got a we've grown apart card now listen to this 
this is what I saw so this card long distance this long distance card that you're seeing right now was in reverse the love unapologetically love unconditionally was in reverse the we've grown apart was upright now what I take from that is that there is fear sometimes when car a lot of times when cards come in reverse it's fear it has the same message except there's some fear in there all right so I take it you're going to the next level and it's scary because <laughs> when is it not scary to just drop all of your your barrier and just go ahead and fall in love especially your mo your emotions are probably still raw coming out of a messed up entanglement um and so this is new to you and it's not fam you're not familiar with it and it probably they're they're telling me it causes a little bit distrust in you so that's what's going on it's almost like it, it's uh, they're saying too too good to be true too good to be true it, and you're questioning like is this real is this real that's what keeps coming up you're wondering is this real could it be um yes it be <laughs> this is the love that you deserve you're finally getting the love that you deserve that's what's happening and then you have this fear over here of growing apart don't sabotage this don't end it before it can actually start okay that's my advice to you let's look at the next card beautiful card right here major breakthroughs your face only fresher all right this means that you are feeling like a new person you receive clarity on something you've been waiting for this clarity brings relief not so much for the actual news but the fact that now you know this revelation refreshes you and it's noticeable in a positive way again it's not about the content but the fact that you finally have a clarity you finally have clarity on something that was confusing you you are no longer bewildered and that in itself makes you feel good so uh, some of the clarity I got under that was there's nothing like feeling alive okay it wasn't reverse that means that you are holding back on showing your happiness about this and this is weird because this is the whole all the feelings I'm getting from this section is you're afraid to be happy you're afraid to show your happiness you are questioning whether or not you deserve to be happy the answer is yes this has been divinely orchestrated okay this connection that you have and I don't want you to push it away because you're reverting you're carrying luggage from your old relationship or your old self or your old situation your old um, whatever it is and, and for the five percent where it was talking about something going on with your parents that prevents you from having a love life meaning you know taking care of their, the family business or taking care of them themselves whatever it was that was heavy going on between you and your parents they might be putting on a guilt trip don't allow that to happen set boundaries for that and then once you set the boundaries enforce the boundaries like I said, that's for those 5%. However, for the other 95, you too need to set boundaries with your ex if your ex is still trying to come into your life and try to tell you that you're, you got, you're obligated to this and responsible for this, that, and the other, okay? Boundaries need to be set so that you can turn this card up right. It says there's nothing like feeling alive. That was under this one, which says major breakthroughs, your face only fresher. You, it's okay to be happy and it's okay to show it. It's okay. Don't let anybody make you feel like it's not okay. It is okay. Now, the other card under there was time to step your game up. So, whatever that means to whoever is listening to this, I know that you know what it means. And I think I know what it means just by looking at the other two cards in this reading. But it says time to step your game up. That was also in reverse. So, that means there's fear there as well. Let's look and see what it is that um, you're getting ready to step up or what you're afraid to step up on. Okay, so this card says research before going forward. This card tells you that there are facts surrounding the situation that you are not privy to. Someone could be purposefully hiding facts or you may be dangerously accepting ignorance as bliss or you are in a state of oblivion. Either way, 
This card strongly urges you to do your own research and not simply count on someone else's word. This card could be viewed as a warning. So of course, of course, I went ahead and clarified that, clarified that. And as I stated before, I do some background clarifications that I don't post all the way up here because that would get too cloudy. Anyway, no pun intended because, you know, your forecast is partly cloudy. Anyway, um, under that was a card that spoke about money under $20. So the research has to do with money, the amount of money that someone is saying that they have. And it could, the angels are telling me it could be you. You could be perpetrating as if you have more money than what you have or the other person, the other part in this party is perpetrating as if they have more money than they have or going back to the long distance, being physical, uh, physically being long distance. If a ticket is involved or something, maybe someone said that they will pay you back for the ticket and they're not going to be able to or vice versa. But this has something to do with money. The research card came up to say that there are facts surrounding the situation that you're not privy to, okay? And it doesn't actually mean that someone's hiding it on purpose, but this card strongly suggests that you look into it and it has to do with money. Someone is perpetrating acting like they got more money than what they actually have. Then to clarify that further, the card that came out was too nice for your own good, how to stand up for yourself in the nicest way possible. So if you are the one that's covering something financially and you're assuming or you've been told that the other part is going to meet you halfway or repay you, you need to actually dive in a little bit deeper. Maybe there's more questions you need to ask because if this person is saying, yeah, 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 I got you when I get down there, instead of just accepting their word for it and saying, oh, okay, all right, you know, they got me, you need to go ahead and ask how. What is your plan of repayment? How are you gonna repay me? Something like that, that's just an example, okay? But there's definitely research needed to be over money that someone says that they have, they really don't. And then saying that you're too nice for your own good, that means that you're believing that you're gonna get paid back or something. So, oh, and the angels are telling me it's not necessarily money, but um, strongly it's money. Could be something else, but it ties back to money. Um, Maybe this person is saying they'll get a job once they get there and then they don't, you know, I'm not sure what it is, but I am sure of the fact that these are your guardian angels. And so you know what they're talking about. So let's go on to the next card. Here is the last card of the fourth row, which means the last card of your chapter. So First things first, as you can see, this refers to a wedding, okay? So if you guys did get married already, congratulations. All right, now let me go ahead and read this note that I have at the very, very top. Please note the cards could refer to a spiritual marriage, common law marriage, or some kind of religious connection other than what's considered a traditional marriage. Only you know what spirit refers to when it comes to your life. So this card came out, part of your reading, lightweight, we lightweight wedding bands, the beginning, all right? So I am going to use the word married, marriage, whatever. And it means whatever it means as it relates to you and your life and your situation, okay? Now... Because some people are spiritually married, okay? Or common law married, okay? Or married in their mind, okay? Um, or traditionally married, okay? Um, or about to be married, okay? So <laughs> there's all kinds of ways that marriage could be related to this card. So open up your mind. Now, this is the beginning of the marriage. It can go in any direction you wish. But be careful because this will set the tone after all, you are married, quote unquote. This card showed up to emphasize this is just the beginning, all right? So first of all, let me say that um, when it said um, 
time to step your game up. I felt like it was referring to, you know, this kind of wanting to be married, like a solid commitment. That's how I felt about it, like a solid commitment. Um, and however, we can't forget the card that came right before that, which was research. So, but just to clarify this more, the card that came out after it was tea time. It's time that the tea be spilled or it's about to. So someone's going to say something to someone about something. I know that that's as general as it gets, but you know what it is that's about to be told. Um, either you're telling it or they're telling it, but it's the information is about to come out or it has come out already something that maybe you didn't want to to know or you didn't want anyone else to know but it's coming out or it did already um so like if you are engaged then that news if you were holding it it's out already or it's about to come out okay that's how it relates to this card um also they told me to look at those two rings in a different way, such as halos. They showed me that those could be two halos, which means that you've met, earlier I already said you met your soulmate. You could very well have met your twin flame and um, research could refer to you needing to research what twin flame relationships are, okay? That's a possibility um, because they're just showing me those two rings as halos, two halos and saying like, it's the beginning of your journey, your twin flame journey together. Um, so that's something to, that has probably struck someone who's listening to this. It's, it's making a lot of sense now. And I feel awkward was underneath the, uh, the tea time, which is the tea is being spilt, which is information is coming out. So it says, I feel awkward. And that's in reverse. So that could mean that you don't feel awkward now. You used to and now you don't. Because, you know, one of the other cards said in the beginning, like, you found out the truth. You know the truth now. And so especially if this is a twin flame journey and you guys have spoken about being each other's twin flame and it made you feel good. So now you no longer feel awkward. And the research, maybe the more you research Twin Flame, the more you'll find out the journey, the meaning of the journey and everything that you guys have in common, the synchronicities and how that all comes into play. Okay, because this person is definitely your soulmate, but beyond soulmate, it has a great potential to be your Twin Flame. Okay, so if the light bulb went off in your mind when I mentioned the word Twin Flame, then uh, that's exactly what's going on. That's exactly what's going on. And with that being said, you have a spiritual marriage here, perhaps, okay? All right, let's go on. Your summary here is, you've committed to true love by now. You are sure they are your soulmate and they feel the same. The ending of this chapter is just the beginning. My sages, my sages, my sages, as you guys already know, or if you knew, now you know. I always include an angel number message tile created by moi um, because I believe in the angel number messages. This is how the angels directly communicate with us one of the ways okay because it's easy to connect with us through the numbers all right and these numbers bring messages and the way that they will be brought to your attention you will see them there will be synchronicities and so with every message I choose an angel number tile that I created and I use the same method that I do with the tarot cards and the oracle cards okay so by no surprise actually this angel number message tile is 1111 that is commonly related to twin flames okay so follow me follow me down this yellow brick road um so just a summary message that i chose for this was your thoughts are manifesting your reality faster than the speed of light all right um let's get into it because 1111 by far 
this angel message is one of the biggest, longest, heaviest. It's just a huge message from your angels, okay? And normally I just do quick highlights of the number and encourage you guys to look it up yourself, research it, because again, just like the cards, you know, you can, with the cards, you can look at the image and 10 people can look at that same image and it means something different to each individual, all right? With one image, 10 different perspectives. Same thing with angel number messages. So, which is the reason why I just usually just highlight, you know, give highlights and stuff. This one, the highlights I'm giving, but it's a lot of highlights because this is a very deep message. So without further ado, let me get started. Angel number message title 1111 means self-reliance and tenacity. Those are what stuck out self-reliance and tenacity the repeating number one is firmly stating four times that we create our own realities with our thoughts beliefs intentions and actions again because they wanted me to repeat that we create our own realities with our thoughts beliefs intentions and actions 11 11 is usually the start of synchronicities that you will notice if the 11 11 frequency rapidly increases the number of times you notice 11 11 that very well may be an indicator for an upcoming epiphany of some kind for you there are countless ways that 11 11 can show up in your everyday life the variables for any angel number is endless Okay, so um, also to help you guys, I'm going to post this link in the description box, but I have a post on Angel Number Crazy, and it's called My Awakening, subtitle is Angel Number Crazy, which is when the angel numbers were introduced to me in my everyday life. It was really freaky. I was, you know, going about my everyday business, and for three days straight, the same exact things happened step by step. And it kept showing me the same number over and over again. And it happened three days in a row. And then not again after that. And that's when I looked up that number that kept on being highlighted those three days in a row. So I tell you all about how I um, discovered the angel number messages. And that's in one of my posts. And I'll put that link down below. Regardless of the frequency, your guardian angel sends 1111 as a quick and easy way to communicate with you. When 1111 grabs your attention, duly note the thoughts you had right at that moment. Your angels are telling you that your thoughts and beliefs are aligned with your truth. Angel number message 1111 has many wonderfully positive directives coupled with words of encouragement. This angel message number 1111 kicks down your door and leaves it open for all other angel number messages. With that being said, I absolutely encourage you to research angel number message 1111 on your own. The information I'm giving here are only the highlights. To get the whole picture, I encourage you to do your own research. I keep these explanations simple keeping in mind that one message can have a different meaning for every individual. Angel number message 1111 means your guardian angel's overall message for you is right now you're manifesting your thoughts into reality at a rapid pace. Let me repeat that. Right now, okay? It's like a gateway is opening, all right? And that gateway is allowing your thoughts to become reality. It's not going to be there forever, but it's there now. So they're drawing your attention to that and letting you know that your thoughts are becoming reality very quickly at a rapid pace right now. Much faster than you have ever before seen, okay? This message carries a sense of urgency when it refers to your thought process. Only think in positive ways. For example, 
If you are hesitating or wanting to ask for a raise at work, do not think about the reasons why they would say no at all because that will manifest. And I know that you guys are getting it. I know you get what I'm saying. So instead, don't think of the reasons why they'll say no. Instead, think of the reasons why you deserve it. Okay? Stay on the positive train of thought. Stay positive. Don't even allow negativity or negative thoughts to enter your mind because they are coming true at a rapid pace, faster than the speed of light, okay? It's imperative that you keep positive thoughts and maintain a positive outlook on your life. I know this can be applied to every single encouraging haiku you've ever read. However, the difference is when you begin to see angel number message 1111, synchronicities, your thoughts can manifest in physical form in a matter of minutes. And that's nothing to take lightly, okay? And again, I'm going to insert my experience just by reassuring you guys that, yes, when you have that open gateway of the 1111, your thoughts can manifest within a matter of minutes. I've experienced it. I'm not going to tell you how, um, but I've experienced it. It's too many to even name. It can go from the smallest thing to the, hu the most huge thing, but they manifest they can manifest within a matter of minutes your thoughts what you're thinking so be really careful and don't think about the negative side or the dark side of anything instead think about the positive side the light side of things and it can be hard if you are a person who always thinks negative, but it will be worth your while to work on unlearning those habits, okay? Because, and not just for, because of the 1111 synchronicities, but just for your health and happiness in general. If you tend to look on the dark side of things, go ahead, now is the time to unlearn those behaviors and get away from the people who are enabling you or the codependency people, you know, who, whoever is in your life that's encouraging you to look on the dark side, get rid of them, okay? Moving right along. As usual, I have a poem, quote, or Bible verse at the end of my empowerment messages. Your love forecast does fall under that category of an empowerment message. So I bring you actually two. Most times it's one, this time it's two. Hey, I told you guys this was long and filled with a lot of details. I was bringing a heavy message. I'm telling your love forecast as your story. So buckle up. I have two beautiful poems to give you. The first is entitled, And Then, by Lang Leib. I always thought the words, and then, were a prelude to something wonderful, like seeing a ship come in or finding a note in your letterbox when you weren't expecting one. That swift, surprising transition from nothing to everything. And then, two little words that hold a world of promise and then, the light pierced through the dark, forbidding sky, and the rain stopped falling. And then, I met you. Beautiful poem. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, before I move on to the next poem, I want to remind you all that each and every one of us has both divine masculine and divine feminine energies within us. So don't get caught up in the gender references that you are about to hear. The butterfly effect. Close your eyes and think about that boy. Tell me how he makes you feel. Let your mind trace over his tired shoulders. Allow your thoughts to linger on that beautiful smile. Take a deep breath and try to put those dark thoughts aside.
For once, let go of the reins you've wrapped so tightly around your heart. I know you are scared. Who could blame you? Love is a hurricane wrapped inside a chrysalis. And you are a girl walking into the storm. Again, that is The Butterfly Effect by Lang Lee. Why do I feel like I need to bow? I'll take a bow right now. <laughs> I love that poem, okay? So I couldn't resist adding that. So you have two. At least I stopped at two. Now, remember, your love forecast is not rainy or stormy. It's just cloudy. And once you apply the guidance from your angels, sunshine will be headed your way by using law of attraction okay hello sages thank you so much for supporting me by watching this video i really really appreciate it you have no idea how much i appreciate it if you liked it and you would like to support me go ahead and show me how much you appreciate it by clicking like and don't hesitate to click subscribe also to the left of your screen you will see additional video suggestions and it wouldn't hurt for you to go ahead and click on one of those all right so go ahead and expand your mind today and get a little bit more of indigo sage tarot from unapologetically sage.com all right Looking forward to creating the next video for you all. Thank you and be safe.